And just like that, our time at the Perini Rhino Camp was up and we were off to the next camp on our safari tour in Kenya. The next camp we were headed to is the Lion Camp. Now, we hadn't seen any big cats yet and like I mentioned in my last vlog, the camps have their name for a reason. So we were ready to see some lions and the Conservancy left us with one last special surprise with these super rare albino zebras which, crazily, are only found right here in Mount Kenya National Park. And conveniently, right next to where we were flying out of. Now, if you thought the regional airport in Nairobi was small, this is literally the airport in Nainyuki. It's honestly just an empty house, no security, no scanners, and this was even our bag tag and receipt, which just seemed crazy to me. But maybe I haven't flown with enough really small regional airlines to know that this is a normal thing. Now, you best believe it, I was right out there on the runway watching Air Kenya land in and ready to catch our second flight with this regional carrier. Both Zach and I were a little sad to say goodbye to the guys that had been looking after us at the rhino camp but we were also super excited because we were about to meet back up with the rest of the crew from Where Is This who had actually spent the last couple of days in the Perini's rainforest camp while Zach and I were at the rhino camp. Now in my first vlog I told you that you feel turbulence way more on these smaller aircrafts and Kenya this time of the year can get a little stormy mixed with the heat and being around the equator it just means flying can be a little rough in saying that we didn't even go above the clouds. So in trying to ignore the weather situation, I told myself it kind of feels like we're just on a scenic flight because we were so low we could see everything. Maybe I was over analyzing the plane, but can anyone tell me if this is normal? Now, after a quick but very important stop to pick up the rest of our group, we were on our way to the Masai Mara. And this was also the first time I got to experience a dirt airstrip. And it was the first of many because we were just hopping between stops in the middle of the Mara. And if any of you saw my TikTok, we actually flew on the shortest commercial flight I ever knew existed of literally only two minutes. Now it was just us left at the end as we were the last stop and this landing was by far my favorite. We could see the African wildlife literally out our windows and I wouldn't have been surprised if we had to perform a go around because on one of the other stops we had to wait for gazelle to get off the airstrip before we could take off. We found out it's actually very common in Kenya for there to be animals on the airstrips and I guess this is just one of the crazy things about being out here in the wild in Kenya. Now, if you didn't know, I was traveling with a bunch of professional videographers and content creators. So literally as soon as we landed, they were all setting up for a video shoot to try and capture our Air Kenya flight taking off. And could you blame them? Aircraft are the most magical things and I will never stop appreciating every part of them. And honestly, no matter where I am, aviation will always be a passion of mine. Even if I do get a little nervous from turbulence these days. As you can see, Perini camps do such a good job at hiding their camps and blending them in with the nature here in Kenya. And also keep in mind the lion camp is significantly bigger than the rhino camp, which if you missed, you can check out my previous Kenya vlog right here. When we first arrived, we went straight into the welcome tent like any other Perini guest, but our briefing was a little bit different as we had to run through the plans of what we needed to film for Perini while we were here at the lion camp. We all then had to go check out this media tent, which was a little bit different to what we had at the rhino camp. And as you can imagine, was a vital part for us content creators. Something you may not know is Perini, like a lot of other camps here in Kenya, all run off solar power. So charging all our equipment can be a little tricky, but having this dedicated tent where we can charge everything is a game changer. It was also the one spot with a decent Wi-Fi connection. So if any of us needed to come work, we could. Now the tent Zach and I were in was pretty much the same as the one at the Rhino camp, maybe slightly bigger, but all the bathroom situation was the exact same. Honestly, we weren't focused on our tent. We just wanted to dump our stuff and get to the dining tent because we were hungry. I honestly had been loving the food we'd had so far on our safari and lunch was more of a buffet style compared to the dine on demand we'd had the previous couple of days, but they still had some great vegan options for Zach and I and even made us a pizza without cheese. Now, if you remember from my previous vlog, we were jam packing our days with safari drives. So the new camp was no exception. Straight after lunch, we were out to see our first lions and we thought why not open up the top and get the full safari experience 
And if you stick around to the end, I would love to know if you think we got pretty sunburned from this. Speaking of all of us, I previously introduced you to Josh, Christian, and my boyfriend Zach, but this is Mary and Marius who joined Josh and Christian at the rainforest camp while Zach and I were at the rhino camp. Now, if you believe me or not, we saw lions literally within the first five minutes of our game drive because Perini camps came through as they knew exactly where a pride of lions like to call home in the evenings, which is kind of crazy how close it was to the camp. I know I've seen lions before in zoos, but having these powerful animals so close to me, I'm sure you could imagine was an amazing feeling. And the best part is we just sat there and watched them do life. There was even these younger lions, which I would personally call cubs, but they were pretty big. I'd love to know what you guys think. And it also blew my mind that they didn't even care that we were there. So the Perini team actually told us the animals see our car as our territory. So as long as we don't leave our cars, we don't threaten them in their territory. And to continue our game drive, we headed to the Maasai River, which Zach and I had no idea was famous for hippos. And we could not deal when there was literally piles of them. And this was my first time ever seeing a hippo. I know these animals are huge, but having only their heads sticking out, they looked so funny and kind of Little. We then parked up for our evening routine called a sundowner, which consisted of having a few drinks and snacks while shooting as much of the sunset as we could. And as you can see, I was trying to be super aesthetic with Mary, but I think that she just does this way better than I ever could. I've been sleeping just fine, oh, that you're not now, we were headed back to the camp and as it was after dark, we had to be escorted to our tents by a Maasai warrior because there are so many animals surrounding our tents and I swear while we were sleeping, we had hippos right next to us. Side note as well, this was the whistle we had to use to call a warrior if we were already in our tents after dark but needed to go out. Now, you best believe we were up at the break of dawn and back to it. Zach and Josh were doing some filming in the dining tent before we had it out on our first picnic breakfast as a group on our morning game drive. I think the picnic breakfasts have to be by far my favorite meal on our safari so far. Being outside in the fresh air, starting our day with the first meal surrounded by nature, it sounds so cheesy saying this, but man, it's so fun. We've just stopped for breakfast this morning and we're out beside the Maasai Mara River, which is filled with hippos, as you can see in the back, and crocodiles, which is really, really cool. We're up on a little ledge so they can't get to us, thankfully. And we're gonna sit here for a little bit and just enjoy, and then we're going for the rest of our safari for the day. Perini team were also super efficient and the food was always consistent and we even had a plane fly over us which was a nice little start to my day. On the way to our next stop we actually drove past the airstrip and I swear that could have been DXB with how busy it was. Now, we had no idea what we were about to get ourselves into when we saw these two lions. We just knew we wanted to follow them and see what they were getting up to. And of course, we weren't the only safari doing this. Having lions out in the middle of day was a little unusual, so all the groups were keen to see what was going on. We probably followed them for about an hour before we realized they were lining up some warthog families. I was so nervous for the little babies, but I also knew this was the circle of life, so I just had to be okay with it. Also, I had no idea that lionesses lead hunts because the male was genuinely just following along and pretty far behind too. The other thing I didn't know are warthogs are ridiculously fast and I honestly could not believe my eyes when I watched warthog babies outrun a lion. Now, as you can imagine, nothing compared to that for the rest of the day, but we did go check out some more hippos on the way back to the camp. Josh also managed to film some fun FPV shots of the Perini camp over lunchtime and then we went out and got some cool shots with the same pride of lions we checked out yesterday. Then we finished off our day with a sundowner. Honestly, the evening was super chill as we had a big day planned for tomorrow, so we were up at sunrise again without fail, which is probably my favorite time of day because life is just waking up and you're really beginning to feel alive as well.
Now, we were also doing something pretty special today. Before we leave the lion camp behind and head to Perini's brand new cottages, we had to visit a local Maasai village. These local and traditional villages are scattered and pretty well hidden all over the Mara, and they still run off the traditional ways of the Maasai Mara people. When we arrived, we were asked to donate 20 US dollars per person for the tour, but we had no problem doing this because not only were they taking time out of their day, they were also welcoming us into their homes and to see their culture. They welcomed us with their traditional welcome dance which was already blowing my mind and then we were welcomed inside the village where they showed us more of their traditional dances. The women greeted us and blessed us with high fives and then the men showed us the craziest thing. It's kind of a competition between the men to see who can jump the tallest to win a free wife. Now this would only happen when the women from other villages would come and the men really wanted to win them over and if they didn't jump the tallest but still wanted the woman as a wife they would have to offer 10 cows as payment. The children in the village were absolutely loving it too. They were so damn cute and speaking of cute, there were puppies everywhere. And I don't care what Zach or anyone else says, I'm gonna pat every single one of them. They also showed us how they start fires as they don't have any electricity or any lighters in the village so they use friction between the two wooden tools they make and one secret ingredient, dried elephant dung. Which also seems to be a very versatile thing in the Maasai villages as they also use this to create a cement type substance that they use to build all of their houses and they were kind enough to walk us through one of them showing us how they have a storage space at the front near the entrance, a locked guest room, then the bedroom in the corner, kitchen and sitting area all with only one one tiny window for ventilation and light. The final part of our tour was the Maasai's market area out the back of the village, which had literally an unbelievable amount of things, from jewelry to tools to every type of souvenir you could imagine. And they even told us everything is handmade right here in the village, which I was honestly shocked about seeing just how much stuff was actually here. I was planning to buy souvenirs back in Nairobi, but I loved the idea of giving more to this local village. So I picked out a few things to take home. We're here for our last day in Kenya at a Maasai village. At the moment we're in the markets and it's absolutely beautiful. These guys hand make everything here. It's awesome. We then said our final goodbyes to the local Maasai people and we were back on the road to our next camp. Well, not really a camp this time as we were headed to the Perini cottages. We were also spoiled on our way there as we spotted a huge herd of elephants and even witnessed them covering themselves in mud, which is something I actually did know animals do as it acts like a sunscreen on their skin and also helps them keep cool. We could be Spending time chasing nights Who's the one until we see the sunrise? Hit my line, we align Every night we use the time of our life Baby, don't feel no, baby, don't feel no pressure And you make everything easy, everything except leaving off as you can see, this was a bit of an upgrade from the camps we had just spent most of the weekend. Don't get me wrong, the tent setups are such an experience, but this was such a nice way to finish off our trip. Even check out this dining area, it's so so cozy and nice, and all the bedrooms were also connected through an outdoor veranda space, which can I mention had hammocks overlooking the stunning Mara landscape. Each bedroom was also slightly different with a different theme, and we had the lion room, which was such a cool setup, absolutely spotless, and we even had two showers, which is so crazy as we just went from a bucket shower system in the tents to now an indoor and outdoor shower to choose from. Marini camps even provided dressing gowns for us and slippers, which Mary and I were straight into. I even managed to find their board game supply, which we didn't even end up trying, which is pretty sad because look at this cool Kenyan Monopoly. I have never heard of this and didn't even know it existed, but if you're from Kenya, I would love to know, is this something you grew up with? We did decide to skip the evening game drive tonight as we did have a big game drive to actually get to the cottages. And sadly, this was actually Zach and I's last night in Kenya. I only had eight days annual leave with Emirates so I had to make sure I was back in time for my next flight. It did kind of suck that we had to leave early but hey I was stoked I was even able to fit this in on my time off with Emirates. Now our next morning just to add the cherry on top for our trip we were surrounded by herds of wildebeest which is kind of similar to how it all looks when they're on the great migration. Now I had never heard of this before this trip but it was such a cool thing to experience and just to make our morning even more crazy we spotted a pride of lions who had just finished off killing a 
wildebeest. We sat there for as long as we could watching the cubs eat the last of its head and hyenas were surrounding them trying to pinch little bits. It was just insane. Unfortunately, we didn't have much time before mine and Zach's flight. So we actually did our picnic breakfast for the morning parked up right next to the airstrip, which was actually so cool as we lined up this incredible shot of Mary and I as the plane pulled up. Now, it was sad to leave the Where Is This crew behind and later we found out right after we flew out, they spotted the cheetah that lives in the area with her five cubs. But let's not dwell on that. Now, we landed back into Nairobi around 10 a.m. and thanks to the Game Watchers team being ridiculous, ridiculously efficient. We had two of their guys ready to drive us around before our flight back to Dubai at 5 p.m., which actually meant we were able to make the most of our day in Nairobi. We decided to go check out a local beading store ran by women to support women working in Kenya. And it was such an amazing experience. The effort they put into these from making the clay to drying it all out, the heat and painting process, then putting them together, they even made us these adorable elephants for us to take home for free. And the store was huge, but I managed to find a little piece of Kenya to take home here before we finished off our tour with these gorgeous ladies singing and dancing for us. Not gonna lie, Zach and I had this song stuck in our head for days. And this little send off reminded us that we are in one of the most beautiful countries with the most beautiful people. Now, I did wanna try and find my classic postcard and pin, which if any of you follow along on my vlogs, these are my travel souvenir staples. So we checked out what must be the biggest souvenir shop in Nairobi. And I was almost tempted to take this chessboard home as Zach and I had become a bit of a fan of the classic game. Honestly, my dream is to have a really nice, maybe kind of fancy chess boards set up in our home one day. what Nairobi City Centre was like, so the Game Watchers team drove us around the hustle and bustle while telling us all about the history of Nairobi and Kenya. It was actually so good and not gonna lie, both Zach and I were also very happy we were just staying in the car as it was so busy out there. a little fully vegan restaurant where we sat down for lunch before heading to the airport. I actually pride myself in trying to find the best vegan restaurants for Zach and I to eat at while we're traveling around to all these different countries. Sadly, we were coming to the end of our Kenya trip, but we were ready to go home and it was such a nice feeling knowing the flight we were about to catch was on a triple seven with a little bit more comfort than the twin otter we had just spent the last week flying around on. I hope you all loved seeing what I get up to on my time off, how Zach and I travel together and just seeing my Kenya adventure work working with Where Is This and the Game Watchers Safari team. I can't wait to show you guys more of this amazing thing we get to call life. I'm